Hi everyone, hope everybody are doing good. In the last video, we have discussed about the uh, talisman uh, we used for pre-commit hook. And for continuing this um, DevSecOps um, playlist, today we are going to discuss about the tool called as Bundit. So Bundit is a you know a software application security testing in a shorthand we can say SaaS tool for Python. So you know in your infrastructure, if you are using Python. So, you know, you're good to go for using this Bundy tool for scanning your application. So before starting this uh, session, I would like to, you know, just brief about what is meant by SAST. So SAST is, SAST is a static application security testing, uh, and it's a type of testing like, you know, that analyze the source code and identify the vulnerabilities. And not only the vulnerabilities and identify the security flaws and, you know, even without executing the program. So today we'll discuss about the one of the famous tool that you know we had introduced, which is a Bandit. Um, so Bandit is a SaaS tool for Python. Um, the, so this Bandit is going is a security tool to it's going to use for finding the common security flaws and vulnerabilities in Python code. So we'll discuss about like how the installation can be happened with a Bandit on your Windows machine or uh, any Linux machine, and how can we use a pip commands to install Bandit, which is a SaaS tool. And how can we run our vulnerable application with the Bundit? So we'll see how Bundit can catch the uh, vulnerabilities and how it can show the on which path and what place or what file have the vulnerabilities and how can we fix it and what else CV information does it provide. So we'll see like how first we'll see how we can install the uh, Bundit and later and we can download the vulnerable repo from GitHub and we can scan the GitHub with the Bundit. And we can see how vulnerabilities can pick up by Bandit too. So let's jump into jump into the installation. So um, you know I'm going to open the uh, Bandit official documentation. So this is a package manager, which is a pip. So you can use this command to install Bandit on your um, you know Windows machine or any Linux machine if you are using that Mac Mac OS. So I will drop these links on uh, video description. So you know if you have not, if you cannot find this website on web uh, on a browser, so you can directly go and install the Bandit. So prerequisite for installing Bandit, so you should in, you should have installed Python in your um, local machine, irrespective of Windows or you know Linux or any other operating system. So you are good to go for you know running this Bandit. So currently we are installing Bandit for 1.7.7. So this is the version and you can go to the documentation of this bandit, how you can use it. So I'll drop this link in the description. So I'm going to copy this, uh, pip install bandit. So, you know, I'm going to open the Visual Studio code. So I'm a fan of Visual Studio code, but if you have not installed in your local laptop, so um, I do suggest you to install it or you can use any ID, like and you can use uh, um, any command prompt like CMD or PowerShell or um, Git Bash, so you can use any any type of uh, command prompt tool. So in our case, I'm using the uh, you know uh, virtual uh, kind of uh, Visual Studio code. So first, I'm going to check what version I have in Python. So I'm going to say Python hyphen hyphen version. So I'm at three dot twelve dot two. So this is my Python version. So and I'm going to copy this command. I think I have already copied, but I'm just recopying it. And I'm going to paste here. So once I press enter, and the bandit will get installed. Um, in my case, like you know, uh, I have already installed the bandit for you know doing a check, uh, check uh, you know, it's kind of practice purpose before starting this video. But in your case, you once you uh, press this command, pip install bandit. It just you know bring the, all the packages and get installed into your local machine. So I'm going to clear it. Uh, fine, like you know we install the uh, Bandit uh, uh, Bandit tool in your Windows machine. So and okay, fine. Um, we have installed the uh, Bandit. Now let's verify whether the Bandit have installed or not. So I'm going to pass the command called as Bandit hyphen hyphen version. Um, okay, Bandit is not recognized as a name of same delete. Okay, so for this error, if you're facing this error in your machine, so just pass the Python hyphen m 
bandit hyphen hyphen version. So press enter double D. So if I press enter, so it is showing this main dot view saying that this is the version of bandit which is 1.7.7. If I come back, okay, uh, yeah, this is the version we have with the bandit. So fine, like you know, as as, as I promised, um, you know. We have discussed about the introduction of Bandit, and we, we have seen how Bandit can be installed on your um, Visual Studio Code or any command prompt that you used. And let's download the uh, vulnerable repository, which is written in Python. So we are going to scan the Python code for that. We should have uh, you know code which has written in Python, and it should have some vulnerabilities. So which is security clause. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to browser. So you know, have found one. Uh, vulnerable application, which is a damn uh, simple web application. So I think I have used, I, I might have used the same uh, application for, um, you know, pre-commit hook also. But yeah, this is the same application. I'm going to use it um, in this uh, SAS scanning, which is with the bandit. So I'm going to copy the GitHub part, the HTTPS, and I'm going back to my Visual Studio code. And here I'm going to create the folder called as uh, mkdir bandit. Come on, I just taking them. Yeah, so the repository has been created. I'm going instead of bandit. So I'm going to clear the screen. And if I press ls, I don't have any file. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clone the repository from GitHub. So for that, I'm going to use git clone command. And if I press enter, so the source code of this vulnerable application get pulled into my uh, Windows machine. So if you see, it is getting downloaded. Awesome. So we do have the application. So you know, if I press enter, or if I press ls, so we can see the you know length name which is the repository name got downloaded so what i'm going to do i'm going to go inside of this the svpw if i press enter and let me clear the screen and if i do ls so these many uh, you know applications are inside of our github repository so this is the same github repository this is the you know a replication like you know we have downloaded it in our local laptop so that is why we have the same folder structure, which is DV, docs, and DSVWE, and SSL, and all. So yeah, we have down, you know, we have cloned or we have downloaded the uh, Python vulnerable application in your local laptop. So like you know, already we this GitHub repository is saying that hey, you know, damn simple vulnerable Python application is a simple web application written in Python and mainly inspired by DL. It is a deliverable vulnerable for educational purpose. So you know, if you want to do some practices on tools, so you can utilize this, um, you know, web application for testing or for knowledgeable purpose of your education. So that is what they have clearly mentioned in the readme dot file. So you know, you can go to other uh, vulnerable solutions like cross site scripting, command injection, deserialization, execution after redirect. So we have these minutes of vulnerabilities are there usually in the you know you know in the real world. So that is why to for making your educational purpose, they hope they have created the uh, Python repository. And as specifically mentioned, this repository has vulnerabilities. So that's also what we required, right? So we required a code which have some uh, you know, security flaws. Now we are going to scan this one, uh, this repository, like the TSVWPA. So we're going to scan uh, this repository with uh, Bandit tool that we have installed in the machine. To, to scan this entire uh, source code which I have downloaded, so for that we need to pass such command, which is a uh, um, Python hyphen m bandit hyphen r dot. So I'm specifying the entire repository because I don't want to scan the uh, each one of the files. So that's why I'm passing the dot. So once I press enter, bund the bandit tool will start initiating. It's, it's a scan all my source code and it will show you how many vulnerabilities are in my um, in a source code that I've recently cloned from GitHub. So let's let press enter. So if you see this, like, you know, Bandit has generated the, uh, you know, 
scan repo. If you see this, like, you know, just pulling the uh, include test and later so it started it and they know this all test results. And if you see that uh, it is giving a CVIT. So first it is giving the issue and CVIT and CW. And if you want to get more information and next is giving a location. So which path it have some vulnerabilities. So if you see this, so like yeah, this is the first issue. Consider the possible security implementation of associated with the pickle model. It is saying there is some vulnerability issue with the pickle model. And it is saying like, CVIT is a low and is low CVIT. And it is giving some you know URL, like you know, hey, you can refer this uh, uh, URL to get more information about it. And this is a CW, CW information. And some more information about the bundle. I mean, it's giving some information to the tool itself. That's why it's saying HTTP uh, as colon forward slash bundle dot read the docs. And later it's giving a location. So in which location you have this vulnerability. So this is what we have. DSVWPA attack.py and 6.0. So this is what, um, you know, line and the uh, file we have. And if you come down, if you see the, uh, um, you know, another uh, vulnerability, which is, um, you know, CVIT is a medium. So that's why it's showing an LO and it's giving the same like location and what is the CW number and where can I find the information. So if you come down in the red, red, in the red, red script, in, uh, red, uh, lines indicate it is a high vulnerability, which means like there are high possibilities like, you know, attacker can take advantage of it. So that is why it is showing the CVID is a high and this is a CWID and you can go with the more information. So this is how it is specifying what script that is, how it is showing the script also. Like if you see each vulnerability here, it is showing the, hey, you have a vulnerability to pickle. That's why it is showing the pickle module. And um, you have a vulnerability with the sub processes. So it's showing the sub process vulnerability. If you see this, this is the line and the line eight. We can consider this is attack.py line number 8.0. And if you see this, like you know, we have a pickle at line number six. That's why it is showing location of the file and the line, which line it has a vulnerability. So that is the beauty of bundled guys. Like you know, even you can integrate this to your CACD pipeline. Um, you know, if you are you know using Python as your stack in your environment. So yeah, like you know, we'll come up with this uh, integration with your CSCD pipeline coming session in this uh, DevSecOps playlist. So this is how you can scan your source code uh, with a bandit and you can find which line and which code have one number please. So you can find the suggestion like it is giving some information. So let me copy this. So cap copied it. I'm going to the browser. I pasted here. So we have referred the vulnerabilities related to uh, uh, untrusted data. So if you see this deserialization untrusted data and it is giving the description, the product deserialization untrusted data without sufficiently verifying the result data will be valid. So it's saying some kind of, hey, you should validate your data before even it is getting uh, executed. So this is all about the description and how what, what, what all uh, suggestions we have to, uh, you know, um, resolve this vulnerabilities and it is giving some scrape and everything. So this is how Bandit uh, is going to scan your source code and it will find which line have some uh, uh, non-sensitive uh, uh, security flaws and uh, exactly it will show you the which code. So it, it's, it's more useful for developers to find the vulnerabilities. So whenever he's writing the code, so he may refer some vulnerable models or version. So this is how a developer can uh, scan his hinted source code and he can um, find the vulnerabilities. If you see this, like, you know, it's code scan, total line of code is 307 and line skipped zero and run metric. This is a run matrix uh, totally showing the total issue severity. Uh, low, we have a six and medium, we have a seven and high, we have a two and total issues by confidence. So it is saying that we have a three as a medium and 12 is a high. So. So this is how guys, like, you know, you can scan your entire source code of Python with the bandit and you can find the security flaws on runtime. So in the coming session, uh, we will see how we can we integrate this bandit into our CACD pipeline. So as I uh, mentioned in the earlier of this playlist, like, you know, we will use poor, um, we will use a pre-commit hook uh, tool to integrating into our CACD pipeline and we will use Bandit for um, scanning our source code. So we'll use the Bandit for scanning our source code into CACD pipeline. So whatever tools that we will discuss in the future, we will en enable those all tools on CACD pipeline and we will do this automation on the server level, not on local machine. 
So do not worry about it like, you know, I am extending everything on manually because I my intention is like, you know, once you understand as manually running those all commands and all. So, you know, you can easily understand while we're going on automation. So so that's my agenda about it, like, you know, um, showing all the bandit and how the SAST, which is a um, static application security testing can be worked uh, and how these tools are going to scan your source code which is not executable uh, and how it's going to show the vulnerabilities and severities and all. So that's all for your video. And you know, if you like this video, please share it to your friends and subscribe to my channel and like this video and stay tuned to this channel. You will, you will see a you know, bunch of volume videos will come in a future only in terms of DevSecOps and best practices. So until then, thank you for time for watching this video and stay safe. Bye-bye.